Welcome to the Stickers on the Mic podcast brought to you by StickerGiant.com, where we talk with our customers about how they started their business, how they're marketing their brand, and how they're growing their company. Without further ado, it's time for the Stickers on the Mic podcast from StickerGiant. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Stickers on the Mic for this week. We've got David Duane and Courtney Garvin from Mouse Book Club, and we're very excited to talk to them about their business. And uh, welcome to both of you on the show. I haven't had a chance to talk to two people like this in a little while, so this is very fun for me. Excellent. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, awesome. Glad so, to be here. Terrific, David. Yes, terrific to have you. David, you know, you reached out to us actually uh, just last week and I, you know, jumped on a call with you and we were chatting a little bit about Mouse Book Club and all your other projects and where you're at. Um, I, were, I really want to start with the both of you talking about Mouse Book Club and, and what this project means to both of you and how it came to be. So if, if, it doesn't matter who kicks us off, but what is sort of the deal with Mouse Book Club? <clears throat> Courtney, do you want to try to pitch it or do you want to be a I was, was going to say, go for it. Let it roll, David. <laughs> okay, so what we do at Mouse is real simple. We make cell phone sized physical books. And the core observation of the company is that basically the, the, cell, the smartphones have trained people to read constantly. But what are you really reading? You know, are you reading social media or online journalism, something relatively repetitive, something that you're not going to really remember? Um, and so instead we took this kind of passport format, passport sized format, and we <clears throat> take great works of literature and we just put it in that. And then we sell them by subscription. We, we bundle them into, uh, and I think that that's kind of a key. So the form factor is really the first core value point of the company. The second uh, thing that we do is we, we combine them into series. So, for example, the current series um, is around Walt Whitman. We're celebrating Whitman's 200th bicentennial, like everybody else in the literature world. And so we did three books that kind of look at Whitman. The last series we did was on solitude. It looked at a, a stoic text from Epictetus. It looked at an old Italian plague era text from Boccaccio. And it looked at Henry David Thoreau's essay, Walking. And so it was a COVID kind of era spirited series around that. So like the, the point of the curation is so a, so that you as a consumer don't have to like have a huge body of knowledge uh, and um, of all literature, we queue them up for you like a great DJ or uh, something like that, or like a bartender almost at a, at a really high end uh, cocktail bar. And, and then the other key point of the curation piece is that it, the texts immediately start making connections. Great books aren't just things that like you read to be a well-educated person. They're things that you read so that you can figure out a better way to understand the world and understand yourself. And so the final thing that we do as a company is that, and the, the subscription thing isn't just so that we have like recurring revenue. The subscription thing is so that we can build a community of people that support each other and that care about um, uh, doing this together and kind of build a movement towards um, revitalizing reading, you know, as something that's really a valuable part of contemporary mobile in normal cases, lifestyles. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense to me. And I think obviously the timing with so many people hunkering down, uh, that a good book doesn't, you know, shouldn't be far away and all shouldn't be hard to access either. Right. So that, that's kind of nice. Uh, Courtney, uh, do you feel like he, he nailed it there? Or? <laughs> Did, did he yeah, he had it? a few ones in there, hadn't heard. I like the cocktail bar part. That was a new, uh, new uh, thing. Yeah, I think uh, just echoing kind of what David said, but um, I think early on in our discussions about mouse books was um, there are all these great ideas, you know, kind of in locked in literature that I think so many people are intimidated by approaching. You know, I'm not going to sit down and just read Ulysses by James Joyce. Like, that's just, it's like, the, it's kind of like climbing Everest all of a sudden, but this idea of taking these kind of bite-sized pieces of literature to get you to kind of lower that, um, a lot of times with museums, they talk about anxiety threshold, you know, this like kind of fear of going into something. So how can we lower that anxiety threshold to make it easy to access these, these great, great works of literature and great ideas. So um, even just like the form factor, like David mentioned, um, even just starting the text on the front cover. So the idea is even if you just look at our front cover, you've already started reading James Joyce. 
um, and oh, just to make cool. that barrier as, as kind of as, as low as possible and as accessible as possible. That's an interesting design uh, approach. I was curious um, where y'all's sort of um, collaboration began. How did, how did the, bef you know, whether it's before or during, you know, the Mouse Book Club, and we're not going to stray too far from Mouse Book Club, but how did David, you and Courtney sort of begin collaborating? Courtney was working for a design agency in Atlanta, and we, she was basically assigned to a project I was working on and uh, developed the uh, branding and um, identity and um, helped me really understand what, I mean, for people that haven't really had the experience, it's really wonderful to work with uh, somebody who who really works in brand design and understands it because it's not so much just like cranking out logo. It's trying to really help you. It's almost like therapy in a way, helping you understand what it is you're trying to do and then figure out through a process how to express your values visually. And that has the color element to it, that has um, a mark element to it. And then it also trickles down into I shouldn't say trickles down. It surges through the rest of your materials that you use, like the kind of slides that you use, the kind of fonts that you use, everything like that. So when, um, so uh, it started out with a company I was working on called Libri, uh, which was like a architectural uh, enterprise. And then uh, we worked, uh, Courtney and I collaborated on a book together, uh, the republication of a book by one of my heroes, uh, Dr. Jonas Salk, um, a kind of a lost uh you know, classic of his. And then, and that was really a deep collaboration because it was a super visual book. And then uh, for when it came to time for Mouse to come around, uh, I thought of the idea uh, one morning when I was sitting on a bus in Chicago and like 45 minutes later, I called her and instead of asking her to just design this book, I asked her to be a co-founder of this company because I knew it was going to be a long ride and that the design and of the book at the object was going to be something that was going to be a pillar of that company indefinitely. And um, I thought you'd just be perfect for it. Thanks. I, re I remember that day I, re I was driving in the car, David called and, and he didn't come and say like, I got it. I got it. I got an idea. Uh, and he kind of pitched that idea to me. And I was like, that's a great idea. You should do it. <laughs> he said, you want in? <laughs> I said, sure. <laughs> I love working with David. So uh, we've worked on some past projects that um, they've always been uh, meaningful in the work, but I think also meaningful in the the bigger part of what they mean, um, whether it was Libri or um, the uh, Jonas and Jonathan Salk book um, or mouse books. I feel like it's kind of designed, but for a bigger purpose. Right. Uh, interesting. Yeah, it's really the vehicle. Um, what is Mouse Book Club? Uh, other, you know, there's the inspiration for the logo, you know, the brand identity, but what's the name? Where does that sort of come from? Well, a little known fact is that it started out, the, co the working name, I had the code name for the project was called Ultra Books at the beginning uh, that I, I kind of, I don't know why. I, I always liked the sound of that name. It started, that was like the code breakers of the British people in World War II. Um, uh, the, uh, we went through a bunch of different names, uh, or like we, so it was kind of part of the branding process, I guess. I think the reason I stuck with it, well, there are two. One is that it sounds kind of unintimidating. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really the thing. They're small. It's a small, unintimidating thing. And it kind of is almost, uh, cheeky in that sense. Uh, but the other way is that like the best kind of, you can't see this if you're listening, but use your imagination. But if you take a string and tie it around the spine of like a passport and then you make it long enough where you can, um, you can use it as a bookmark. Mm -hmm. Then uh, as it's like sort of running around, it looks like a little mouse kind of. Like a little tail. <laughs> physically, yeah, physically it looks like it appears to have a little tail. Yeah, right. Yeah, it appears to have a tail when you put like a like kind of, DIY bookmark on it. I kind of, that, that's fun. And then you've got the very simple sort of mostly negative space logo, but obviously the, the you know, the mouse is right there front and center. Uh, yeah, Courtney, why did you like the name? I, I like the idea of the, um, the kind of, I think, 
exactly like you said, the smallness of it, it, it takes away the intimidation. Uh, it feels like pocket size. It's like pocket size, uh, even the, the quantity of the text is still kind of like bite size we talk about. Um, uh, and that like kind of portability. I forgot about that bookmark. I, mean, I, I knew that our bookmark's part of it, but I forgot about the tail part. I mean, I think that's what kind of sealed it. We were looking at a couple different names. Yeah. Not everybody likes the name. Our editor hates the name. <laughs> Constantly is like clamoring about changing the name. Um, but I think it's it's more or less, it's it's a nice sounding word. And you can say mouse book club. You could say mouse books. Like it, it effectively, or you could just say mouse. Yeah. And it, it works that way. And then the logo is cool. Yeah. I don't know. We came just, up with a bunch of different names, but we had kind of started, I guess, mouse was like, there was ultra and then mouse was like a placeholder. And then I remember we had a document, we just brainstormed a whole bunch of other ideas, but mouse was the one we kept kind of coming back to. Yeah. Cadillac yeah. books, stuff like that. And there work, you know. <laughs> the other ones don't, don't feel right where we, you know, just like in talking about it, we would use it as a placeholder too. And it just kind of started to feel more and more right. Yeah. Andrew, what do you think of the name? Do you think it's a good name? <laughs> I do. It definitely kind of struck me and, and we're actually big house of mouse people here. So like, you know, I uh, automatically go right to, to Disney um, and our listeners uh -huh. will know how much I talk about star Wars, but um, you know, it, it, for me, that's why it was intriguing. Right. Cause, cause um, I, I had a sense of like, well, it must be small books. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like it, coincidentally, you know, before you even get to the website, it's, it's nice. It's kind of, you know, like with people when I say, oh, I work at stickers, they're like, so do you do stickers? And it's like, it's right there in the name, right? It's right are they, there. In the are they really big stickers? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that was, that's the next thing. Are they really big stickers? And I'm like, always, I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Um, but um, so, you know, it, it immediately, without even having to jump over to the website, right? Like it, it automatically tells you kind of what it is without, um, without the full, um, without having to think too hard. And I think that's some of the best brands, you know, they do that, right? They don't make you think too hard. Um, but then once you get into it, you realize there's so much more there. Um, so you start, um, you know, on your site, you're saying that you kind of start this whole thing off, you hand make a hundred copy holiday edition just for gifts. And what, you know, how does the seeding and the, the development of that first series come, come to life? What, what is that? That's really funny. You should tell the Bartleby story. I was about to say, you want me to tell the Bartleby story? Yeah, so, right. um, tell the Bartleby we were, story. <laughs> so we were, we were just starting out and, and, you know, David had pitched the idea and, um, and so we were like, well, let's, let's lay out a book. And he said, just pick, pick any text. So let's, let's test it out. And so I was looking through things and I had been reading a book about the office place uh, and they had cited the first um the first mention of kind of like the modern day workplace um, as being written up in um, Melville's short story of Bartleby the Scrivener, um, which it has like a, it's a fun name to say, and it's got three characters. Um, I'm blanking on the names right now, but they've got kind of funny names. Um, and so Nippers. I, what was it again? It was oh, Nippers, is one of them. Nippers, Nippers, uh, Ginger, or um, I'm blanking on their names. I always thought they'd be good, three good pet names. But so I was like, oh, I'll just <laughs> I'll lay out Bartleby the Scrivener. And it was like this weird synchronistic moment where David had also been thinking about Bartleby the Scrivener. I was like, <laughs> what, what are the odds that the both of us are thinking about Bartleby the Scrivener? So uh, that was kind of a uh, fun, like we were on the same wavelength from the get go. Nice. And it's a fun, and it's a, it's a great, it's a great uh, story. So I recommend it. If, um, and that was in our very first um, series, as David mentioned, one of the things that we do, um, I, we always are, are asking ourselves, how are we different than a regular book? You know, because the book's been around, what are, what is mouse books doing that's different? Um, but one of the things that I think that makes us unique is our um, connecting it to other great works of literature in these uh, collections. So it's not just reading Bartleby the Scrivener, it's reading it in relationship to two other pieces of literature. So our very first collection we did was on the idea of refusing um, in Bartleby the Scrivener, the main character, um, his line that he keeps saying throughout it is, I would pref I prefer not to. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I prefer not to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so this idea of refusing. And so we paired it with two other works of literature to spark this conversation about refusing. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So, so like a quick note about the books, by the way. Um, is that, or like the design, is that the titles on the cover and starts right on the cover. 
But then the kind of the salient sentence from the book is always on the back, oh. you know, so that you can always just like if it's laying there at a glance, you could look at that. And that's really like if you knew the book, everything that's special about that book will kind of come rushing back to you. And it's also designed to be like sort of read on public transportation. So if I was like sitting like this, reading it and you were sitting across from me, you can kind of yeah. check it out. You know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that color blocking like provides the contrast and really draws your, your eyes to it. Um, yeah. So color, color, by the way, like, as you mentioned that color is a massive deal for us. Huge I, deal. That was what I was going to say before we dig in. Cause you got the three box sets. The first one sold out. Good problem to have, but then you have all these other like breakout sort of different subsets, the like on refusal, like you just mentioned. But when you look at sort of the way the books are packaged in the larger sleeve box, and then you have these sort of, color blocks again with top and bottom and how did that all you know that that aesthetic what, what was the choice there that that was made um for you all yeah it was um kind of in the early stage when we were bouncing around names and you know kind of um uh, this thing was kind of starting to uh, uh coalesce or condense or whatever these ideas um we tried a bunch of different designs um but the idea of starting the text on the cover and kind of this reverence for the written word and letting that be the kind of visual hero of it rather than trying to necessarily like maybe design a visual for every book cover kind of thing just let the text be the the kind of visual interest um but then there was the challenge of how do we designate seasons and collections and stuff um and then even just kind of set the tone so there's there's reasons for all the colors that are chosen um you know sometimes things are expected the christmas collection was you know, kind of red, um, but always having like a little twist, you know, some maybe an unexpected color that's thrown in there. Um, or, or maybe it's, we used color when we did our public series of like a really bright color. Uh, Cause the idea if someone's reading it in public, that these are like really important ideas and wanted to kind of draw people's attention to maybe works of literature that they, you know, weren't necessarily top of mind. So there's kind of always a reason behind it. Um, and then it, it, they just, you know, when you have them all together and then it, um, the other nice thing about the color is then when they're separated, you can always go back and say, these were, you know, this is the refusal uh, collection, like that there's a connection amongst those three that um, at least when we did it kind of, so there's David, myself, and then we have two other people in mouse books, um, Brian Chappelle and Chris Motley. Um, and we started actually doing our own kind of book club with these books early on. Uh, and really found that that reading the different the different works together in this series of three was really really rewarding uh, in a way that was I, I feel like more fulfilling than just reading the piece by itself. Our most interesting conversations came about because when we talked about one one book in relationship to another book along a theme, and that's been something that we've stuck with and has really become vital for for what we do and how we're different. I will say one other thing, just a. a at a detail level that's hard to appreciate but um almost it just like i think vibrates from the book is that we we take the color of the physical chemistry of the color really seriously so most times when something's printed it's printed in like a force color offset process like cmyk offset process mm -hmm. most books only print spot colors so like all these colors are like the ink is pre-mixed in a way that like makes the color as pure as possible. And like the lines of the, on the covers as sharp as possible. Um, and so they, they're as close to perfect as you can get from like a color, like production standpoint. But also Courtney's got a, like a master's in color theory from Yale. <laughs> so like, she's like, the colors are really fucking good. Just, I'm, I'm sorry. The colors are really good objectively. <laughs> um, and, uh, I think that for me, it, like the, the story, like the object should feel super special when you're holding it, you know, it should make you want to read it. It should celebrate what's in there, you know? Right. And I think for, for us, we have very few chances at that. One is the book itself. And this could be a good segue to talking about the stickers because okay. another is a sticker. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, okay. Well, let's talk about stickers. This is stickers <laughs> on the mic, but what, um, what, well, how do you, what are the sticker? What is the sticker sort of, um, process for this? How do you match a sticker, design a sticker for these little books? 
Sure. So when we, um, we try to keep the, the overall cost low. So it's like we started at 50 bucks a year. Now we're doing it as like a recurring 15 bucks a quarter. So it's like 60 bucks a year, but the, we don't, and we are giving you a bunch of books for that. And we're trying as hard as we can to make sure that the package has exactly the right level, like number of things when it comes to you. And that as you get, as you open it up, it unfolds um, into something that's like just wonderful and joyful, you know? So when you open it up, the very first thing that you get is a physical letter from the, our editor. Like, so it's a letter from the editor, but it's like literally unfolds like a letter. And you read about like what the series is about, you know? Hmm. It's a one little piece of paper then. And like, of course this comes in like a custom mouse box that we, you know, that feels like on brand and really tight to the company. Then uh, under the letter is the books under the, and the books have like this shot of color. So the Whitman books that are out right now are purple. Bang. You know, you get this purple. So then you pick up the books and you, the sticker is underneath there. Okay. And so like, this is like a collection of all the different stickers. Like I'm showing Andrew, oh, okay. like yeah. my, my time blogging journal that has each quarter. So this is Whitman, this is solitude. This is pu- the red one's public. The yellow one is African-American literature. And, um, uh, we, so it, they're almost like, if you're a, if you're like a subscriber, that's a, one of the like little treats you get is like that uniquely colored sticker for each quarter Uh, and who knows what you do with those, you know, but then the last thing you get is like a a lecture series poster because we go out and solicit interviews like this with, uh, you know, professors and authors who teach these different uh, books, you know, Mm -hmm. and then we, the the community comes together and we discuss those and we put it out as podcast for our own. Uh, But that's it. That's like the package. And so each one of those four things that you get has like a lot of pressure on it to be right and cool and serve a purpose. And, I just think stickers are fun. You know, it's yeah. lighthearted. You can put them, you stick them somewhere and, or you give them to a kid and it makes them happy. And, uh, they remind you, uh, that, you know, this is out there and this is something you're part of. Nice. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. It's a logo sticker and, and it, you've got it sort of as like a collector's item there with all of them. That's kind of fun on your notebook. Um, Let's see here. So the way that it works, I mean, you sign up, like, how do you, uh, how do you get the, uh, there's the way that it works for, for the consumer, but then there's the way that it works for you all. Like, how do you, how are you trying to get the word out and like, uh, keep these collections going? So you do create that community and, and we will get back together someday in person. Right. I mean, I'm sure the lecture series was very virtual this year, if at all, but like, you know, how do you, how are you bringing in uh, your audience? So we started out doing crowd funny like i think they're like and it's it's tricky crowd from like a company rather than like individual projects so we've chained together like a few crowd funding ideas but i think we're eventually we'll grow out of that and kick the you know or we'll kind of beat the um the addiction to like the kickstart cocaine uh i think that but well, that was really useful at getting us that core you know like we we've, we've been profitable since day one you know and it's a matter of like, we, I think we reinvested everything from the company thus far in really building a foundation upon which we can scale, but we haven't put a huge amount of emphasis on scaling because we haven't really felt like all the pieces have fallen into place just yet. But right about now, it's starting to feel more cohesive, you know? And, um, you know, even this morning I was working on, according I'll send to you later, like this initiation video for like the new members, you know, that talks about like, this is, a, these are our values, this is what we, this is what you need to expect from us, this is what we expect from you. And like all that stuff's kind of starting to click right now. And I think we're seeing people's like level of engagement go up and the, the sort of offering become simplified and sort of dialed in and you know we have our relationship with a printer and fulfillment center figured out all that stuff we have a cost all figured out and it's just all the you know all the unsexy things that you have to do to grind through like um the kind of initial launch phase the kind of that first experimentation phase now everything's kind of settled and we can really just focus on um 
trying to market this in a way that's like authentic to the brand basically. So, and that's, this has been around for a few years then. So it's taken a few years, like, like you said, to like really gel to where you're, you're satisfied with, uh, your mission and your, and your future. As yeah. Well. Yeah. We had tried kind of, and as we were, you know, cause it started with an idea and then as we were going, we tried different things and like now everything feels really seamless, but that's kind of come through some experimentation and trying things and, and then even those things kind of leading to more ideas. So it was much more of kind of some years of discovery of uh, figuring out what's, what really is kind of the core thing that we're offering what's what's a value what are we excited by and what kind of I know one of the things we had a conversation a lot about was like what kind of company do we want to be um I think there were some kind of different points along that path where we had to decide we could go down one path or another path and you know what is it that we like about doing this and then you know what kind of company do we want to be yeah to be really specific about that we had a meeting about a year in which was the first time that all four co-founders of the company ever met each other in person (laughs) Okay. And I was in Washington, DC. We sat down and said, are we going to try to grow fast or do you want to try and grow slow and steady? You know, should we go and fast means, do you want to raise some money, try to build out a little bit uh, like more infrastructure on this team? And, uh, or should we just keep all the control, keep all the equity, uh, keep our day jobs and go slow and steady? So this company has like, we, we just added it up the other day. Uh, we've printed uh, 120,000 books and we've shipped about a hundred thousand. Okay. And um, nobody works on this full time, you know, and uh, we're starting to get to the point where we can think about hiring somebody on full time. Uh, but for, at the moment, it's just like a really, it's a really serious side hustle. Right. And, um, and uh, you know what, like it, it doesn't, and Courtney and I were joking about this, like on the phone the other day, like just don't feel like work, you yeah. know? And so it does like, I'm not exhausted. Um, even though I've like personally shipped most of those books, you know, almost all of those books. <laughs> and I just feel like when I send out thousands of copies of like Walt Whitman, I feel better about myself. I feel better about the state of the world, you know? Right. And, um, and it's allowed us, and so like, even as we think about growing, we, we don't want to be a massive company. We want to stay small, stay independent, keep in control of like what we do and how we do it and cater to a market of zealots and their friends. And, um, and if, we can, if we can build this up to a company that works for four people or five people, that's all we need. Right. Um, what do you think of that strategy? You know, it's interesting because everyone is chasing this elusive payout, it seems like. And on this show, it's I'm very fortunate to talk to people who are like yourselves, who are very passionate and recognize their role in guiding the future of their business, by and large. Only a few have been the kind with outside investment, a lot of these are still very mom and pop, literally their husband and wife teams, or, you know, there's, um, you know, a young entrepreneur who kind of just launched an Instagram, you know, and then the product follow and, and, and it like, like a lifestyle brand, for instance, you know, that just turns into a plush toy that turns all these things, right? Like these people from Tubby Nugget that I interviewed not long ago, you know? And so, um, clearly everybody has a different path, right? To answer your question, what do I think about? I think that it, and it sounds like y'all have been very intentional, right? Um, And you still have your other jobs and, you know, Courtney's, you know, you mentioned you you teach, right? You know, you, you let, you you probably still do graphic design work too. So, you know, how to keep that balance. I mean, if, if this were driving you so hard that it wasn't fun and it felt like work, you probably would have stopped after a year, right? So, what are you like four something years in now, give or take, you know, working into your fifth year as a company. That's, it sounds like it's working. <laughs> right. So like that, that is exciting to me and also inspiring. And, and I think would speak to the point that you, uh, you got it right at that point to, for, for where you were. Right. And you'll, I guess the next question for me is what's next, right? Other than how do you, I, I, the question I actually wanted to ask next was how do you curate the titles that you choose? Um, and what's that, 
sort of editorial process look like to, to choose the next collection. But of course, I do want to know what's next, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and we'll get to that, I suppose. But how do you- I think that I think that we're going to we are going to go through a period now in 2021 where we're going to try to accelerate growth. And um, we have a plan for that, uh, but I don't want to talk about it, <laughs> if that's OK. That's it, OK. It, that, and that's another has, thing a lot of times, too, when I'm talking it about it. Has it has to do, just honestly, <laughs> it has to do with um, some per, like uh, people. And out of respect for like the people that we may, you know, try to start working with or start to kind of connect with that can, that can connect us to a broader audience. Um, I'm just going to leave it alone, but the, but we have, we have strategy for try trying to ramp up uh, because like we finally, honestly, like we finally feel like we have something that is like, that is bug free enough to scale. And uh, it's not totally bug free, but it's enough. You know, and so, so that's what's on our mind. Um, so, curation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you know, on the more nuts and bolts of like, you know, because like you said, when you send out some Whitman, it makes you feel good. So clearly, there's like a personal investment in some of these titles. But then you also have to like figure out what people are into too, right? Your your community will tell you what they what they enjoy and what they don't. Right. You know, that, that's interesting. We had this conversation recently, and I think it's one of the benefits of having a subscription based product um, is that there may be some topics that people on their own wouldn't gravitate towards. You know, maybe they might go for like love or poetry or kind of uh, things. But, you know, solitude may have not been one of the ones that people just on their own would 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 choose. But one of the nice things about the subscription based model is. Um, our editor is fantastic and he picks out amazing stuff. So um, mm. maybe serving up some topics that people wouldn't be the first thing. In fact, I was, when we we did solitude, I was kind of like, nah, you know, I was looking forward to um, uh, another one. Don't, don't, don't. Yes, I'm not going to say we have one that, that I was really, <laughs> excited, I was really <laughs> excited about. Um, solitude wasn't, wasn't my, of the ones this year was, I would, if I ranked them, it probably wasn't my top. Well, but, the one, the, the series that I always think about this, we, we haven't released yet, but we absolutely will at some point is suffering. You know, mm-hmm. there'll be a series on suffering, which doesn't have a lot of market value, probably. <laughs> People aren't going to go to the store and buy a bunch of books on suffering, but it's a, it's the fundamental human emotion, probably. And you should, everybody experiences a lot of that. And I think that it will be a popular and a series that will kind of uh, stir people up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a trust factor. So yeah, to, to speak to curation a little bit, Brian Chappelle, the editor from Mouse is the second person I called, I think. I think the first person I called was Courtney. The second person I called immediately when I got off the phone with her was Brian. And he's got a PhD in English. He is just a deeply, a deep feeling person. Um, I think he's really, he's one of the people I go to whenever I'm trying to um, figure out what to read next or, you know, like mm-hmm. what is, what interesting ways to think about current events. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's picked, so it's really interesting. What we've done um, right now is that we've picked the series like five years into the future. We know what books we're going to do. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. one of the reasons to, we haven't printed them or anything like that, but one of the r- reasons to do that is so that by the time we get there, we'll say like, well, this was a good idea five years ago. It's still a good idea, mm-hmm. you know? And if the answer is yes, then that kind of tells us something. You know, that, they, that what we're dealing with is something that has like long-term uh, value. And then, which is the opposite of like whatever, uh, like a social media campaign that is like trying to figure out what is important this instant. Right. Fuck yesterday, fuck tomorrow. What's right. important right now? You know, right. I, I don't care about that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Looking at, you know, obviously you're mining the past quite a bit for a lot of this content, but then with an eye on where you had you know, into the future with this company and how you can reach your, your audience. Um, what is sort of, you know, as you've developed this and, you know, we could clearly talk about this all day because y'all are pretty knowledgeable, but what is the, one of the biggest takeaways you've had, one of the learnings you've had, you know, developing this? Cause again, you said it's a side hustle, but clearly it's, it's taken an outsized role in your lives and, and how you identify 
right? What, what have you taken away from this process? You can go first, Cordy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I left. It's like, we're going to bring it down here. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that for, for me, there's like two aspects to it. One is uh, the the kind of business side of, of mouse, kind of uh, what I get out of that kind of uh, as a company. And then um, there's also, I'd say what I get out of it as a subscriber, you know, that mm. like, I think one of the things that's unique about this is like, we're, we're also, we're mouse mouse book fans too we're in the club we're mm-hmm. reading we're reading stuff as um uh you know our our our, um, our fans are kind of thing we we're in the discussions um nice. so so there's it's kind of i think also been useful i mean the, the subscribing reading part there's been there's just there's all these books that like i probably wouldn't have read but have been so meaningful and so helpful and made me think about things in different ways and have been actually helped me you know, use them in moments where I needed to uh, kind of have some insight uh, into <laughs> how to how to deal with certain things. You know, like it's just it's like the, there's insight that's come from these great works of literature um, that has lasted beyond just the moment of reading them that have been very has been very profound. Um, I'll say I'll say two things. Also, one I would say is how like the deep emotional response we get when people get the books Mm. we hear the word love a lot you know Uh, and i think that people um there's still a uh a human an innate human desire for analog things yeah um that would be one the second one is for me i like think about it as wow moments you know where uh in these books um, I can, I can like, just look, uh, look down my bookshelf here. Like I can remember very distinctly where I was sitting when I read the, um, the happy prince by Oscar Wilde and I got to the ending and I literally closed the book and I just whispered, wow. And that's happened to me a bunch of times. And I think that those are the moments where you feel like that kind of micro dose of enlightenment and you and i will never forget that as long as i'm alive you know and i can't say that for many things that i write you know but i can say that for like more than a dozen things we've published which is a great feeling right i read the newspaper every day and the wow moments out of that are more like (laughs) wow, I can't believe this is happening yeah. you know? um, or, or, you know, and, and I obviously, I, I sort of live in, and breathe the news cycle and, and the daily, you know, grind of just, you know, current events. And so it's nice, I think, you know, to your point, David, and, and also to yours, Courtney, about how the books sort of take you away and, and in this place, both allow you to detach a little bit, but then involve you too, and striking that balance of, of, of how literature, uh, connects personally, but then, you know, publicly too, which is kind of neat. Um, so as far as, uh, you know, so those are your takeaways, um, for all of our listeners, you know, what, where can they find you and, and, you know, what, you know, you're going to keep it a little closer to your vest, but what, what can they look for uh, and how can they connect with you all? Okay. So, you just go to mousebookclub.com and you can either pick to buy something, you know, uh, like a one-off or you could subscribe. I encourage you, uh, you know, clearly to subscribe because I think it's the coolest way to experience what we're trying to do. Right. Um, I think that uh, what can you expect? I think you can expect an immense amount of consistency this year. Um, we're going to try to really get on a drumbeat of dropping uh, cool projects quarterly, uh, and then unfolding like, th- okay. So this is, this is something that, you know, we felt for like some time, but have only surprisingly recently kind of really locked in is that it seems like a product company, but it's really not. I think we understand ourselves much more as a sick of service company mm-hmm. and that, once you like the book is the gateway to a much deeper experience. And so what we like, what literally like when I lay in bed at night, thinking about mouse, sitting at the ceiling, what I worry about or think about is what if people aren't reading the books, you know, 
And how can I help them? Or what can I do to make sure that people are actually reading those Walt Whitman books they now own? And so I think what you can expect from us this year is to be really deliberate about a, a, a the kind of additional resources that help you um, to help you get the most value out of everything that you get from us. And all that stuff's going to be free hmm. um, and just like available through the website. And we'll try to send it out in, you know, only, you know, the fewest possible emails. Um, mm-hmm. And then we will, we, we will uh, try to do, I think we're going to try to do two special projects that I don't mind talking about. One is uh, one of our subscribers is an archivist down at, in, uh, I'm in Chicago. So that for me, it's down in Springfield at uh, Abraham Lincoln's, um, archive and presidential library. And I think we're going to do a, a special project on Lincoln and pull some material out of that archive, which will be a lot of fun. Um, especially as we're sort of, you know, recovering from, uh, uh, like our sort of faith in the presidency. The second thing that we will do later, uh, at some point this year is I think we're going to try to test something in the like education space in the, uh, specifically for like homeschoolers. And I'm, I'm your, I'm your audience for that. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. you have a market for that because I have three kids and two of them are homeschooled and, and one is doing a thing through the district, but I have three kids at home. Right. So I think that's spot on. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so the, the tricky thing for us is to try to be like, to try to jump at that, yeah. you know, we're not really good at jumping for things. Uh, but I think there's like, I think it's that hop, is, it seems like. <laughs> the, the yeah. Story. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's, so, that's what's coming. Yeah. Consistency, a little bit of content maybe uh, that you're, get to develop in a different way perhaps than, than what you're been sort of used to, uh, Courtney, um, how do you, how are you going to help execute that, that vision <laughs> of consistency? Uh, and do I, you have different plans by the way? No, no. I think, well, when we talk about, it, I feel like daily, <laughs> it's yeah. multiple times daily. <laughs> so we're, it's kind of always, uh, we're always kind of bouncing ideas off of each other and, um, formulating kind of new things. So we've got some other things kind of cooking in our, so, you all were actually uniquely positioned because um, you're already working virtually and remotely and collaborating across, you know, space and time. So, um, you know, and that sounds like the whole team does that. Yeah. Right? None of us are in the same city. So Chicago, Atlanta, Austin and D.C. Oh, wow. So that's quite a geography. Um, yeah. Luckily, not too much of a time difference. But um, the so that in a way is maybe one of your strengths, too. Like you say, you're are, you're kind of able to be consistent because you haven't had a massive disruption this year. I mean, everyone's had massive disruptions in other parts of their lives, but for most book club, you've at least been able to keep that steady thing. You yeah, you know, the other thing too, is um, we've been doing, um, and that's one of the things we've kind of been, I'd say like perfecting or kind of trying to just get, get right in mouse kind of way um, is our, our, is our actual book clubs. Um, and so, with everybody feeling more comfortable and everybody kind of getting on zoom um, we've been able to move that our book clubs to kind of like uh, not on, you know, a video conferencing thing. And that's, that's worked great. Um, yeah. Which I think probably so, so that, fun. that would have been a hard thing to, it just wasn't even kind of thought of a possibility, but that's been actually fantastic. Um, and that's, that's another thing this next year will, you know, we're going to c- keep doing um, that has been, I think, hugely successful. And I encourage and if anybody s- signs up to be a subscriber, um, the book clubs where we have uh, experts come in and talk to us about the books, um, you don't have to. It's unlike, you know, if anybody's ever been part of the book club where nobody actually reads the book, you know, right. <laughs> have this excuse to get together, or have a dinner party. Um, the best part about our book clubs is you don't have to have read the book yet. There's no guilt associated with that. If anything, it, it probably gets you more excited about reading it, um, gives you more insight. So if you've yeah, read- Courtney has stopped reading the books before. I Boy, love the hearing club. the speakers first. He likes to go to the book club first, oh, then nice. read the book. I yeah, saying, you I lay them so out. I think. <laughs> I think you know the books. Um, <laughs> he doesn't read them though until after. That's fantastic. It's great, but it works okay, so, out okay. Go ahead. Okay, Dave. so hold on. I have one other. Well, before we wrap, yeah, yeah, I have to publicly pitch my idea. Go publicly pitch your idea. Oh, Clearly, yeah. giant. Okay. Yes, all right. Here we go. This is, this so, is, this is a, where we turn it all around. Normally, I'm trying to get advice and, and kick it back to our, our guests. Our guests are going to give Andrew, FYI, FYI, this is not this is not a um, this is a thought that's been brewing for quite a while. I think 
told me this what, a year or two ago. So <laughs> That's this, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch me. Th- Here we okay. go. So this is a new I, section of the show, folks. This is where they pitch us. Here we go. I have been a, a lurker on the periphery of the sticker subculture for some time. Right. I think that there is an opportunity for an interesting crowdfunding page for Sticker Giant or for anybody else listening. To go to kickstarter.com, mm-hmm. open a new campaign titled Stickers, Stickers, Stickers. Okay. And then you go down the page. And the heading is just heading one. It doesn't say heading one. It says stickers. Mm -hmm. And then the whole paragraph just says stickers, 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 (laughs) stickers. Okay. And then, then there are pictures of stickers all over the place. Then another heading stickers. And then on the only word on the whole campaign is stickers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Reward number one stickers, 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 stickers. And like, so, so it's like this, uh, it's the, and then when people back, they really don't. Yeah. So like the reward number one would be like stickers, five bucks or reward number two, stickers, stickers, 25 bucks, mm-hmm. something like that. And then stickers, 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 a hundred dollars or something. And so then you just send them shitloads of stickers just based on the number of things. So like the only challenge here, I think it would be hugely successful. Inventory, obviously is. I mean, the only challenge is where are we going to get all these stickers? <laughs> it sounds to me like inventory is a major challenge, um, but no, that's fun. And I, I mean, as far as an SEO, uh, you know, thing, if you're looking for stickers, you're highly likely to find it. I, I think that would be like testing the keyword stuffing, uh, you know, to like the max, I think that's pushing it to the limit. So I, I, you know, as far as like, I love the word stickers. I love culture around stickers. I, 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 um, I can get behind that. Um, so thank you for the pitch. Um, just do it, man. Just do it. way for a sticker giant to just clear out its entire inventory. We, well, we, we print y'all stickers. And, and actually, I had one last little sticker. Does that little character emoji have a name or a characterization or a backstory? Just It's just mouse. No, just, ma- just mouse. We, we thought about it earlier on. Just but mouse. I think that it's kind of less about that because it's, it's more about the book. But it doesn't, it doesn't ever... It's just in the kind of brand right. mark, but it doesn't ever take a, um, it doesn't become like a character. Um, it kind of takes a backseat. Okay. I've said, I, Got I, it. Got there's, it. A, I there's some, wondering if, there's if some level of proof. nuance there. I think that like one of the things we want to do is uh, okay. that Courtney and I have been uh, batting around is to, and um, when somebody signs up for the very first time, give them like a challenge coin that talks about like the two sides of what mouse is doing. And the two, the, really the two realities of the organization mm-hmm. on one side would be like an icon of the shape of the book with its little rounded corner and like that line through there. And that would, mm-hmm. and that would say reading judgment, internalization or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So like you got to sit down by yourself in a solitary way a solitude would be a good word on that side of the coin and actually do the work of reading on the other side, it would have a little mouse face, mm-hmm. which for me, it represents the club and mm-hmm. the community and getting together and discussing and confronting ideas as a group of people. And it's like fundamentally social. Mm-hmm. So I think that that, so the, the, when I think about the little mouse head, it represents the social side of mouse for me rather than the internal side. Does that make sense? Right. It does. Yeah. No, there's, I, I, I love talking to designers and, and founders, especially how every little part of their brand has, has some sort of intentionality. I mean, things, you know, according to it's like, it's the mouse. Book club. I mean, it's like, don't over some things though. It's like, don't overthink it. But then at the same time, David, it's like, but really, I'm, you know, clearly you're like, this keeps me up at night. So that's the beautiful, again, duality of the two sides of the coin. I really love that analogy. And, you know, as someone it who keeps us from it. having to have a mouse off with any other, <laughs> other famous, you know, be very careful with how you per- personify mice <laughs> exactly. or meese. Yeah. Um, so yes, like you say, you gotta be very careful. Um, well, friends, this has been fantastic and very elucidating, and I really appreciate how you know you've come together and and been doing this for a little while, but you've been able to sort of um, it sounds like consistency is your mantra for next year, but it seems like it's kind of been what you got through this year with too, because otherwise um, it could have very easily life could have intruded and you could have done something else very easily this year, and you've got to December of twenty twenty with a head of steam that it seems like is going to propel you into next year. We, just, is- we just finished a new special collection. Uh- for the end wrap up the end of the year um a special collection on hell so, <laughs> which we're really excited about okay there you go <laughs> yeah it was kind of like a oh uh, yeah it was a yeah a salute to 2020 <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and, thank you so much. Yeah, and there's super cool stickers for that one. That was what set this whole damn oh, thing good. off. Yeah, it was uh, right. like yes, actually, it was yeah. a very unhinged customer service call trying to make sure that these <laughs> stickers got executed perfectly. Um, but, you know. We love unhinged service calls because we live to serve at Sticker Giant. There's no doubt about that. So You know, that's one of the things about Sticker Giant actually is my favorite thing about your company probably is the customer service. Where does that intense customer service ethos come from? Uh, comes from two places. That's a great question, and I'm happy to entertain it really quick here. Um, we use a, a model called Zing Train, which um, you're in Chicago. Um, so in, in in Arbor, Michigan, is Zingerman's Deli. And uh, for folks who go to Ann Arbor, I've never been, but Zingerman's is now a family of businesses that does more than just food service, and they have this um, sort of philosophy that's based primarily on the great game of business, which is our other philosophy, um, which a lot of people on the show have heard me talk about. That's Jack Stack's book um, called The Great Game of Business, and it's open book management. And Zingerman's took open book management to the next level with food service, and has as people have worked there, gone off and started their own companies. And we have other things that I've mixed in, but those two things really, when I started seven, eight years ago now, were the core of it. And I, I you know, to, to your point, I was like, what is all this? Why are people so excited? Like, like, I mean, customer service is the bane of some people's existence, right? Whereas our folks are really delighted to delight people. And, and we have a whole training module. We even send people to Ann Arbor from time to time. Not this year, of course, but it comes in a very practical way from the one book, um, Great Game of Business. And then it's there's a extension of training called Zing Train, uh, you know, not to give away too much of the secret sauce, but, you know, we still are able to then, of course, have a high focus on quality and our, how our team interacts with those, those two philosophies, right, David? So um, it, it's something well, it works. It yeah, works. constantly it's being like worked on. That if, um, how many, how, what's a head count at Sear Giant? We're moving north of 100 right now. And when I started uh, back in the day, we were 20 people, 20 five ish. So, huh. um, the last few, but it really That's only, amazing. yeah, really only pushed that number in the last year. We've, we've, we're on a sort of a rapid growth section of our history. Um, and so we've scaled quite a bit, uh, with, you know, 30% plus year over year growth for the last few years. So it, it's been uh, quite a ride for me, uh, and watching and being able to also interact with people like yourselves to both share that story, but, it requires folks like you coming up with businesses four years ago to, to want to do this, to keep us going too. Right. So, I mean, I think it's a, it's a give and take. And, and so I think our team, our front facing team is very uh, focused on delivering the best possible experience for you all too. So, you know, no, everyone's logo and sticker is the most important one to them. Right. So <laughs> it's, it's important to remember that when you're on the phone with somebody, this is like, they're, you're literally kept up at night because you're like, what if the sticker doesn't get your on time, <laughs> you know, and it's important. So um, we appreciate your business and we appreciate your time on the show. Thank you, David and Courtney. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Sticker Giant. So we say this every single show, uh, every sticker has a story. Today's sticker is the Mouse Book Club, this wonderful little circular sticker that apparently has many meanings. And I bet you the folks who get it put even more meaning into them to it themselves, right? So that's the beauty of how your brand has been able to be a part of people's lives. So thank you for letting us share your story and also sharing these stories with your with your community. It seems like a pretty valuable service these days. And um, I wish you all the best for this next year. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. That wraps up this episode of Stickers on the Mic, brought to you by StickerGiant.com. You can download us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcatcher. Thanks again for listening to Stickers on the Mic. We'll see you next time. Thank you.